Hello everyone, Shroom Rover here, and today I'm excited to be bringing you my week number 9 battle from Division 2 Season 4 of the Pokemon Premier League. Yes, indeed. Now, you'll notice that I didn't say I'm bringing you the team building analysis video. Um, I'm going to combine the two for this week at least, um, for reasons which I'll explain at the beginning of the battle. It all ties in, you will understand why. Um, so yeah, this is going to be a combination of both, um, both the team analysis and the um, the battle. So uh, as you may know, uh, two things. Firstly, we're pretty much out of contention. Well, we are out of contention for promotion at this point, and that this week we faced off against Jim, my man Potato Jim, and the Pine Cove Ramblers. His links down in the description below. Um, yes, Jim's team. Uh, it's the team I think has gone through the most changes in that he's picked up four different ones. He's actually dropped five. So his team uh, that he can use uh, is Jirachi, Sylveon, Zygarde 50%, Mega Blastoise, Regular Rotom, Miltank, Blaziken, Scolipede, and Quilladin. Uh, his special Z move user is Jirachi. His regular Z move user is Blaziken. He dropped or got rid of um, one of his Z move users. I think he had. Galvantula might have been a Z move use for him. I forget, it might have been Archeops, I'm not sure. But either way, he's only got two left. Uh, he has some fairly spooky stuff on his team. Uh, I am very briefly right now going to go through the team that I decided to bring to take on those nine. And uh, first up, we have Araquanid, Web and Flow, the Araquanid. Jim told me that he didn't really fear anything on my team. He should, because this is a choice banded Araquanid. And aside from a defensive Zygarde and the Mega Blastoise, it two hit KOs everything on his team with the combination of Liquidation and Leech Life. That's pretty awesome. Uh, it's got 180 in speed, I'll explain why that happens sort of in a little bit. But yeah, uh, Banded Araquanid basically it comes in and either kills something or just damages something very badly. Um, I've thrown Toxic on there, it's not uncommon when you've got a choice uh, set to sort of say, okay, well I don't need this last move slot, I'll chuck Toxic on. Normally that's the fourth move slot, for me it is the third move slot. Um, so I've thrown Lunge on there in case I need an attack drop. Like there's very little else I need on the rack when it other than those moves. Next up we have Ibra the Zapdos. This is a uh, leftovers, max speed, max special attack, modest set with Thunderbolt, HP Ice, Agility, Baton Pass. Zapdos can do a lot of damage, as it always does, with just the Bolt Beam coverage. Um, agility to get my speed up nice and high. And um, maybe I can pass that speed into a Raquanid, which with the speed invest I've got, I believe it outspeeds everything unboosted. Um, I'm pretty sure that's where we're at with a plus two Araquanid. That's why I've got agility and baton pass on Zapdos mainly, because if I can pass into a Raquanid and I've sort of taken care of the Mega Blastoise and maybe a bit of the Zygarde, uh, we can really start doing a lot of damage to him. Anyway, third up we have Barrett the Terrakion. This is a Scarfed Terrakion, um, 56 HP, max attack 196 in speed, uh, jolly, close combat, on hit earthquake and quick attack. Um, at that pace, this Scarfed set, um, it's outspeeding, uh, it's outspeeding Adamant Scolipede, I believe, um, and I think that actually just about allows it to outspeed, um, Jirachi, uh, as well, I think it's hitting 168, it also therefore outspeeds, <coughs> um, a max invested mill tank if you wanted to bring that. Mill tank is one of the main reasons I brought this guy, you know, you need strong fighting stab to break through mill tank, uh, Iron Head is just nice, it'll help me try and break the Sylveon, maybe. Um, Earthquake is good coverage against the likes of Rachi, um, and it hits pretty much everything for neutral damage except the Quilladin, um, because he doesn't have a ground immunity, as far as I'm aware. No, he doesn't. Um, and then Quick Attack is Quick Attack, because you never know. In case I bring a Scolipede down to Sash and it's got up to like plus four speed and I need to Quick Attack it, there's your answer. Next up we have Necrozma, stupid build of Necrozma. This is an autosomized weakness policy set with Psychic, Flash Cannon and Dark Pulse. But we're going with a lot of HP on there, 76 into Special Attack, 188 Speed Timid. Yeah, um, I've never brought this one before. 
but I'm hoping it can do a big amount of work. Psychic Flash Cannon and Dark Pulse hit the majority of his team. Uh, I think they hit everything neutrally. They can hit a lot of things for super effective damage as well, you know. Um, he doesn't particularly enjoy Psychic Offense. Um, he doesn't have a Dark type. Uh, his only resistance is Jirachi, I believe. So yeah, that's quite fun. Uh, hoping that Necrozma can be a nice little late game cleaner. Uh, especially if, for example, I can bring it in on a Rachi and he just like wants to U-turn out of there to get some momentum and go into something to take a hit. I can set up the Autotomize and get plus two, plus two in an instant and then try and do some damage from there. Then we have Salazzle. Uh, Oxide the Salazzle is back once again with a very, very standard set that I've been bringing. Life Orb, Fire Blast, Sludge Bomb, HP Ice and Flame Charge, 220 speed Timid. Uh, max special attack the rest into HP basically with a couple of defensive EVs here and there. Yeah, if I can get a flame charge up, I can do a massive amount of damage to a lot of things and be outspeeding them even if they're scarfed. Um, it's it's a slazzle. There's, there's very little really to explain with slazzle. It kind of just does what it does. Um, and then finally, we have Sadie the Morwile. Uh, this is a sort of lead set. Uh, Focus Sash with Metal Burst, Stealth Rock, Knock Off and Iron Head. Um, I'm kind of hoping that this will be able to deal, at least in part, with the Mega Blastoise. Jim has shown a penchant for leading with Mega Blastoise. I'm hoping the fact that I bring Zapdos won't entirely put him off doing that. So if I can lead with more while and just get a Metal Burst off as he just goes for a, a Scald or a Water Pulse or something, um, we're going to be doing a lot of his HP. Unfortunately, more while won't be particularly useful after that, but if I can get rocks up on, say, I don't know, a Rogue Quilladin, um, or maybe the Sylveon, I don't know, uh, we might be able to sort of try and keep them up. Um... Yeah, there's a lot of mons I wanted to bring here. Um, well, that's that's a lie. There's one other mon I wanted to bring here. And, you know, looking at his team, um, the Mama Swine. You may be asking, why on earth did you not bring Mama Swine? Um, there are just sort of too many options that he can sort of check or counter it. Um, Mega Blastoise is such a good answer and puts so much pressure on my team. Uh, especially given the fact that I'm not bringing a particularly bulky Araquanid. And, you know, every time I bring a Raconid in, something toxics it. And, you know, Mega Blastoise, I'm assuming, will be packing the toxic. Um, you know, Mama Swine is a fairly easy switch into, um, you know, a potential Scoff Blaziken. Miltank can tank it and do things with it. I just, for those, those reasons that I didn't bring the Mama Swine, I, it didn't fit on the particular team I brought, so that's why it's not there. Uh, looking at the stuff he's going to bring... I mean, Jirachi, Sylveon, Zygarde, Mega Blastoise, uh, Blaziken, Scolipede, I'd have thought, would be his things. I don't see him bringing Quilladin, really. Uh, sorry, Chunk, but it's, I don't think it's your day. Rotom, I, I, again, I just don't think it gets him too much. It's not quite speedy enough, really, uh, to warrant, I don't think. Like, he could bring a rogue, very defensive set to deal with Terrakion, like that wouldn't be outside the realms of possibility, and I have thought about that, uh, but I just don't think it's happening. Uh, the mill tank, uh, mm, again it's a possibility, uh, he could, like, see I don't think he'd be bringing a sap super mill tank because I do have, you know, I have a tangler that he could use it again, but I, I don't think he'll think I'll bring tangler, so I don't think he'll have much sense in bringing uh, sap sipper. Uh, he doesn't need Scrappy because I don't have a Ghost, and, you know, he could bring Thick Fat for the Salazzle, but realistically speaking, um, he probably has Mega Blastoise to deal with that. So those are the six I think he's bringing. Uh, that out of the way, what we're actually going to do is get straight into the battle. We're going to hop over into the battle and see exactly how things played out. So, here we are with the battle. As you can see, on my opponent's side, we have... Zygarde, Sylveon, Jirachi, Mega Blastoise, Miltank, and Scolipede. So most of the things I thought he was going to be bringing, no Blaziken was nice to see because that thing can be pretty tricksy. Um, now, a few things to note before we get into this battle, and this is kind of going to explain why I didn't particularly have much time on this one and why we've combined them. You'll notice I'm facing off against Memes and Dreams. I'm not facing off against Jim. Um... Jim is a man who is... He's, Jim is a man. Um, no, <clears throat> Jim's been looking for uh, permanent employment for a long time now, and we were due to play on Monday, but he couldn't make that, I believe, for, you know, doing his current job. 
So then we were going to play on the Tuesday and it turned out he couldn't do that either because he suddenly got called in for, I believe, some kind of trial period at another job. Which meant he had to get in um, a substitute uh, battler. Now, <clears throat> we do have a number of sort of people on our roster um, or within our sort of group who are happy to step in and do these. Unfortunately for me, uh, the one who stepped in was none other than Merck. Uh, you may know Merck. He is one of the high, one of the most sort of well thought of and highly ranked draft players around at the moment. Um, this was sorted out sort of early on Tuesday, at which time I was at work. I did not have access to Discord, so I found out that I was playing one of the best draft players in Merck two hours before the game. Now, I very much understand why it had to happen. Um, these things happen, you know, Jim was suddenly involved in a trial period and a potential new job. I completely understand that as someone who was unemployed for three years, desperately looking for work and not finding it. It's always great when that happens, so I fully understand. I get it. That's not to say I was not annoyed. I, I was, because you don't want to find out two hours before your game, suddenly you're not playing this guy, you're playing this guy. Oh, by the way, he's one of the most, most highly thought of players in draft format at the moment. So I was unprepared for that. It happens. We're gonna, I'm a bit disappointed I didn't actually get to play Jim himself because I was quite looking forward to it. But a game's a game. We're going to give it our absolute best shot. So without further ado, let's just get right into the battle and see exactly how things played out. So, going to lead off with my Morwal. He's actually going to go with the Jirachi. <clears throat> this is okay. He's actually just going to hard switch out uh, into Miltank as I go for a knockoff. Get rid of Choppleberry. That's nice for Terrakion later. So, gonna switch on out of there and go into Zapdos, thinking he might try and uh, Thunder Wave, but he's, or something, I don't know, he's gonna go for Stealth Rock anyway. Uh, and they're there to stay, because I can't remove them. In comes Rachi. Thunderbolt does a lot, um, and I managed to get the Paralysis. Um, he shows himself to be Leftovers. He's gonna get out there, go into Sylveon, which is gonna take the Thunderbolt much better than um, Jirachi ever could. But there's no sense in staying in here. I am just going to go into Morwell, um, which is a sort of nice mid-ground offensive defensive switch. He's going to go for Heal Bell, though. Get rid of the Thunder Wave uh, paralysis on the, um, the Rachi. In now comes the Blastoise. I do unfortunately go for Rocks here. I probably should have just gone for an attack, because he's going to Mega Up, and he's going to go for Rapid Spin as I go for the Metal Burst, um, which is unfortunate. Now here, I... Predict him to predict me to go for rocks. He's going for warp pulse. I am just going to metal burst right back, but it doesn't quite kill, and he is able to take me out with the following water pulse. That's really unfortunate. No rocks on my side, and he's still alive. Now I go into Slazzle, and as I clicked it, I was like, oh no, Aqua Jet, and he reveals Aqua Jet. It's not going to kill, and I will get the uh, KO with Sludge Bomb. From the range of health he was at, Flame Charge was not a guaranteed KO, so I couldn't go for it. But in comes Scolipede, and he is going to go for the Protect. I was hoping he might like Swords Dance or something, and I can just go for the Flame Charge and get my speed and try and outspeed him again, but it's not going to happen. He is just going to Earthquake me here uh, and take out my Salazzle. So we're down 5-4. to four. Uh, At this point, I'm going to bring in my boy Araquanid, and at this point, something's taking a big old hit. In comes the Miltank to try and take that big old hit. He does not take the hit. It does huge damage, gets the defense drop as well. He's going to go for the Body Slam, and of course, he's going to get the Body Slam para. I do break through, so I finally get a kill with uh, Araquanid, that's nice, but I can't pass agility into it now that it's paralysed. So in comes Danger Booge, he's going to get the Rockside kill, of course he is, um, down goes Araquanid. Uh, and now it's 4-3, to three, but I still have options here, one of those is to go into Necrozma, and I'm like, just go for the Mega Horn, go for the Mega Horn, go for the Mega Horn, he doesn't, he goes into Zygarde. And I'm like, okay, I went for Psychic and I do nothing to the Zygarde, I'm like, okay, so it is stupidly bulky Zygarde. So, gonna switch out of there into my Zapdos, as he is gonna go for Toxic. He's got the Toxic on this, spoiler alert, not the only thing I think he's got Toxic on. Um, and that's, you know, unfortunate. I'm forced to go for the Hidden Power Ice here, really, as he goes into the Sylveon. And it's going to do, as you can see, you know, bugger all to, uh, to old Sylveon over there, of course. Uh, now, at this point, I'm just going to launch off a T-Bolt. Uh, potential two-hit KO, as he reveals Wish. And I'm like, you're going to go for Protect, aren't you? 
you're totally going to go for Protect, and he goes for the Protect. As I go for Baton Pass, just basically to show him that I can and that I know what he's doing a bit. Uh, going to go into Terrakion, he's defensive so I can take a Hyper Voice. But I'm going to go for the Iron Head to try and flinch him. Uh, it doesn't flinch him, he's going to go for Hyper Voice, which I do live. Um, and now I'm just like, can, can I take him out? I knew he was going to go for Protect uh, to get to the point of Leftovers where he could live another Iron Head. But I'm going to go for Iron Heads again and again and again anyway, basically till I die. In comes the Zygarde, and uh, that is pretty much going to be that for Terrakion. Um, but I am going to switch out uh, into my Zapdos. I actually thought I could live another Rock Switch in, uh, forgetting that I'm not dual resistant. But he actually goes for Thousand Waves, not Thousand Arrows, so he's full toxic Wish Protect Trap going on here, which is disgusting. Uh, but he's actually just going to get on out of there, go into his Jirachi, knowing that I'm forced again to go for the Hidden Power Ice. Uh, which is unfortunate, as you can see. Uh, if I'd have gone for Thunderbolt, I'd have been able to kind of 2 it KO him here. But um, I go for Thunderbolt right now, and he reveals Wish on this as well. And I'm just like, come on, Merc. And then he reveals Protect on this as well. And I'm like, come on, Merc. I was not happy at this point. I was rapidly losing interest in this game because I was not expecting to face what was essentially Toxic Storm. So I'm like, okay, go into a Necrozma, and I'm just like, go for you. So he has Toxic on this as well, and I was just like, I'm done. I'm done with this battle. Let it end. So I have my Artosomize, but I have no weakness policy. I'm going to go for the Dark Pulse. It's going to do 40%, and he's going to Wish. And I was just like, I'm so done. I'm 17 different kinds of done. Um, he goes into Zygarde. Because this Zygarde is ridiculous. Um, I don't actually know the full extent of the set. I suspect he might have been Coil. Uh, but I'm now just going to fire off a Psychic. Uh, it's not going to really matter. He's going to go for the Thousand Waves. Um, which is going to, you know, not really matter because I'm going to go out to Toxic. And uh, now I have Terrakion. I bring it in. And I'm not... Quad, weak, quad resistant to rocks, so um, we are going to go down and that is going to be the game. Yeah, um, I'm going to throw it out there. I left this game really, really in a sour mood. I was not happy. I was nuclear at this point. <clears throat> um, I I took a, a, a about sort of 20 minutes. I just... I just Shut down Discord. I shut down Showdown. Um, Merc in the chat said sorry, and I just said no and left. And I was I was not not happy at all. I was really angry. Um, but I sort of I calmed down and I talked it out with Merc. Um, and I think we sort of left. We we left it on on pretty good terms. I was I just needed a. A moment to sort of calm myself after the uh, the whole situation. I wasn't expecting uh, to face him or the strategy. Uh, although, as I've been informed that Jim was the one who made the team, which is a departure from what I was expecting from him, um, it was it was pretty disgusting. Uh, I think it had three toxic users, maybe uh, two wish protectors, uh, a trapper. Um, and potentially only one thing that was actually offensive. Um, maybe two if you include the Mega Stories. But uh, yeah, it uh, it wasn't it wasn't an ideal battle. We do lose it 4-0. I mean, the result is particularly irrelevant for me at this point because we're not getting promoted. We're nowhere near. I think we're probably going to finish bottom. Well, that's not true. We're going to beat P. Um, I I say that with you know bravado that I don't feel. It was it was a well built team. Um, on on Jim slash Merck's part um, just went against entirely against what I was expecting uh, and pulled it off with great aplomb so yeah fair play I can't really say anything against them I say so I did have a bit of a sort of a, a bit of a tantrum afterwards um, and fumed for a while but <clears throat> no I, I understand uh, where everyone was coming from with exactly why it had to be set up in this way. I think the the thing that, that got me a little bit was sort of not finding out until two hours before the game that I actually wasn't playing who I thought I was playing. You know, I was prepped for a style and I went up against Merc, who I know is an excellent player. I actually haven't played him before, I don't think. So I'm not particularly familiar with how he plays. I don't know, we're sort of going off on tangents here. Um, the end result 
is a 4-0 loss, which is unfortunate, but it happens. Um, fair play to Merck, he played the strategy very well. Fair play to Jim, who built the team, uh, so I'm told, with, with, with great use. Uh, apparently Merck may have changed like one or two things, but when you're taking over someone's team that they built, that's absolutely fair. Yeah, I can't really say anything too much against this one. Um, there wasn't too much in the way of hacks, really. Um, like, yeah, there was a body slam para, which in the long term, how much did that really matter? Um, I got no flinches. I can't complain about that. Flinches are hacks themselves. You can't. You can't say that not getting hacks is hacks in its own in its own way. That's like saying that if someone hits a focus blast against you, then you've been hacked. It's it's not. So it was actually, to be honest, a, a very clean game. Uh, so I can't complain on that score either. Um, the upshot of it is we lose another one. It's unfortunate, but it happens next week. Ho ho ho! Oh, next week is going to be good, ladies and gentlemen. Um, this one has been building. Oh, it's been building for quite a number of weeks. This one, ladies and gentlemen, is against Ryquin and Nido Queen's Park Rangers. I'd expect to see a video at some point before then when we are going to flesh out exactly what's going to happen in that game. So keep your eyes peeled for that. Uh, but as for now, links down in the description to Potato Jim and actually, do you know what, Merc as well. His links will be down there too. Um, they're both fantastic battlers. Um, they're both excellent people. So do make sure you check them out. Jim uh, has fantastic content. Merc has been just constantly there stepping in to help out people when they can't do their own battles if they're sort of not around and they have to get a sub in. So full credit to him. Thank you very much for doing that, Merc, uh, on, you know, on so many occasions. We move on to two and seven, I think. Um, yeah, two and seven, not great, but we've got two more games. We're gonna win them both. So uh, yeah, that's pretty much it from me. I'm gonna get out of here. Uh, thank you all very much for watching. I do hope that you enjoyed, and I guess with that, I'll see you next time. Laters.